Hi, I'm Sean from Leap Motion. This is the getting started guide with uh, Leap.js. Uh, we're going to be using our uh, Leap Motion version 2 of the uh, Skeletal uh, API to uh, complete this demonstration. So, uh, yeah, before we get started with the tutorial, what we're going to do today is we're going to write a simple beginner app which takes advantage of the, uh, the V2 Skeletal beta tracking features. And the things we'll be using are the JavaScript API to interface with Leap Motion. And also, the, uh, we also need the, uh, the version 2 of the core services installed, which is available at developer.leamotion.com. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we'll go ahead, and we have our browser window open in our uh, coding window. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and paste in a, uh, an example shell, uh, which just showcases the uh, output window that we're going to render our uh, data into. So you can see there's a, a quick view of the output. Very, very exciting. So from here, what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and include our uh, beta version of the JavaScript API for our Leap.js. And you'll notice too that this is 0.6.0 uh, beta. And uh, we'll just want to make sure that's the, uh, the correct version before we get going because that works with uh, version 2. And we'll go ahead and stub out the JavaScript portion of our application. And again, we're writing this all in a single HTML block, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to recognize. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a concatenation data function to simplify some of our print statements. And after that, uh, we'll get a, a quick reference to the, the DOM element for the output, because we'll be writing HTML to it. Uh, we'll create some helper frame string, hand string, and finger string method, or excuse me, uh, variables. And uh, we'll just use those as we uh, loop through the, uh, the animation data. Uh, next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up our leap controller loop. And this will be the, uh, the core loop that gives us back uh, frame data from the device. And uh, as frame data is coming in, we'll go ahead and iterate over it. And we'll, we'll print out some hand data. We'll print out some finger data. And uh, then we'll showcase some v2 functionality. So let's go ahead and get the loop set up. And once we do that, uh, we go ahead and refresh so nothing is happening right now, which is OK. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can add in some uh, frame data output. So we'll go and use our concat data method uh, to print out the frame ID. And you can see again, too, all this is going to print out is the, uh, the ID and the data, um, nothing too, too fancy. And from here, we're going to go ahead and print out the uh, number of hands coming in on the frame and also the number of fingers, too. Uh, and after we do this, um, let's go ahead and add a, a quick line break for, for clarity. Uh, let's go ahead and set the, uh, the outputs inner HTML to uh, the frame string. And uh, this will just go ahead and basically render that to the screen. Um, but before we do that, so why don't we go ahead and plug in the Leap Motion device. So we've got the Leap Motion controller plugged in. And next thing we'll do is we'll open up the, the visualizer, which will give us, give us a live look of our uh, hands with respect to what the Leap Motion sees. So uh, we'll size down the window a little bit to uh, give us some more room. Uh, hit the H key to bring up the, the options, and then press the uh, minus key to, to zoom out. Um, and then you'll see if we stick our hands in, we'll have a, a nice, uh, nice hand model, which is uh, consistent with V2. And you can see we have uh, you know, two great hands that have uh, joints attached to them, have uh, fingers, and we are looking good. So the, the first thing you'll notice, too, if you look back in our console window, is we have output coming out. Um, we can see that the number of hands uh, changes. But uh, also a big thing with uh, version 2 is that uh, each hand consistently will always have five fingers on it. Uh, so that's a, a big change with uh, version 2. Uh, so hopping back to code, let's go in and show you some more features of uh, V2, V2 tracking. So from here, the, uh, the next thing we're going to show is uh, basically the uh, left-handedness versus right-handedness, which V2 offers. So that'll be able to, uh, as a developer, you'll be able to see uh, how to distinguish between left and right hands. So we'll go ahead and grab the, uh, the frame data with the uh, hands attached to it. And then from here, we'll just do a simple call of our concat data method to, uh, to print out the hand type. And, and again, too, you'll know if uh, you're using the old version of the JavaScript API if a uh, hand.type comes back as undefined. Um, 
So we'll go ahead and we'll append that onto the frame string just so that prints out. And we'll move down our inner HTML call to make sure that things get set properly. So from here, we're ready to, to run again. So we'll go ahead and refresh. And if I stick my hand in, you can see that I have my left hand in. I'll, I'll pull my right hand in also. And then as I move my hands in and out, the tracking of v2 consistently identifies the left versus right handedness. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next thing we'll show from here is we can show off the, uh, the pinch strength and also uh, grab strength. Uh, so pinch strength is basically the strength between 0 and 1 of the, uh, the pinch pose that Leap Motion recognizes. And then grab strength is the, uh, obviously the, the strength of the, the grab pose which is your full fist. So as I'm pressing down my fist, you can see that the, uh, the grab strength changes between zero and one to show the, the intensity there. And same thing with uh, pinch too. As I pinch my index finger and my, uh, my thumb together, you can see that the, uh, the pinch strength gets uh, closer to one. And then as I take those away, the uh, pinch strength goes back to zero. So the next thing we'll show how to do with uh, VG tracking is how to print out confidence data, which uh, is a value that's on the, the hand object that's coming back from the API. And this will tell us basically how well the hand model fits the observed data coming back from the leap motion. And the, the data that's coming back from this is similar to pinch and grab strength in the sense that uh, the values between 0 and 1, with 1 being a, a very uh, clear representation of the hand and 0 being the uh, less uh, fuzzy representation of the hand. So the closer you are to 1, the, uh, the better the hand data you'll be getting back. Great, so now that we have the confidence value, uh, so the next thing we'll do, uh, let's just go ahead and, and move up this, uh, this confidence line here just to put that ahead of, ahead of pinch strength. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we'll just refresh our browser one second and we'll see what a confidence value looks like. And again, this is going to be between 0 and 1. So I'll refresh and put my hand in and you can see the confidence value is anywhere between 0 and 1. As I open my hand up, you can see that the confidence value goes to 1 because the leap motion has a better representation of your hand model. Uh, as I close a fist, the, the hand model gets more fuzzy and uh, that value goes uh, uh, downgrading a little bit to, uh, to 0. And uh, you can see how those, those values fluctuate as I move hands across one from one another. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to manipulate some finger data. And to do that, we'll add some helper methods. And we'll discuss what those, those mean in a second. But for all intents and purposes, uh, we have helper methods that, uh, that map a uh, index, a finger index, to a, a string literal uh, finger value. And we're also going to have a helper method that is similar to a concat data method which takes in a, uh, a joint and uh, prints out a uh, position vector for that. So fairly straightforward, just a, uh, a three element array that we're going to print out. So uh, the next thing we'll do is we're going to go ahead and iterate over the finger data. So what we can do is take the hand object and uh, set up a new for loop right below our existing for loop. And we'll go ahead and grab the uh, finger object from the, the hand. So once we have, we have our finger object, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the, the type from it. And for again, for reference, the, the types of fingers are represented by, uh, by indices, numeric indices, and with uh, 0 being the thumb, 1 being the next finger, 2 being the middle finger, 3 being the ring, and then 4 being the pinky. And those can come uh, out of order, unordered from the uh, JavaScript API. Uh, but those will always be mapped to uh, consistent indices that I, that I just mentioned. And the next thing we're going to talk about then too is uh, joints for fingers, which is another big uh, component to our V2 uh, tracking system. Uh, with joints, we have uh, three separate joints on your finger that we represent, the, uh, the dip, the pip, and then the MCP. Um, with that, uh, what we're going to show is how you can get position vectors back from each of those joints. And the easiest way to, uh, to reference those are uh, dip is basically the topmost joint on your finger, uh, pip is the, the joint directly beneath that, and then the MCP is the, the joint that's closest to your knuckle. So why don't we go ahead and uh, we added those in, 
and see what we get. So now we have position vectors for each of the joints in our fingers. So that's pretty cool. Uh, as we move them around, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of fluctuation with the, uh, the data that comes in. Um, granted, too, there's uh, a lot of uh, movement going on. And then the last thing I'll show you is uh, just a, a quick example of, of a uh, convenience method. So we can actually reference the, the thumb off of the, uh, the hand object. And that's just basically analogous to uh, defining the thumb within the fingers array and, uh, and using that. But uh, we also have support for uh, thumb, uh, pinky, ring finger, uh, middle finger, and index finger API methods. So just a nice convenience method that you can access finger data from directly from the hand without having to iterate over the other uh, finger. So that's the end of the tutorial for uh, Leap.js uh, version 2 with tracking. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you in the next tutorial.